We've got some Proust questionnaires written there. Some Read Proust them. questionnaires? Yeah. Oh my god. My heroes. I work a lot adapting comic book characters, and I, I know people think I would say, you know, Batman or Superman, but most of my heroes are scientists. I'm um, Carl Sagan, Richard Dawkins, Einstein. Joining me today is David Goyer, writer of, let's see, the Batman trilogy, and recently, Man of Steel, monster hit. Congratulations. Thank you. You've worked with Chris Nolan, the director of the Batman series, in kind of an incredible collaborative team. I had met Nolan socially before Memento had even been released, mm -hmm. and he literally could not get it released, and, and which I couldn't believe, having seen the finished film. Mm -hmm. So I knew him back then and watched his trajectory with Insomnia, and then <clears throat> he got the gig to reboot Batman, and he called me. We were working on the third Dark Knight film, and we were we had writer's block. I had some old Superman action comics, mm -hmm. just started reading them, and just spent a couple hours randomly writing up a take, not even knowing what Warner Brothers was doing. Came back to meet with Chris. He said, "Did you solve this problem <laughs> on Batman?" And I said, "No." And he said, "What the hell have you been doing?" I said, "I don't know. I've been screwing around with the Superman idea," and he said, "Well, let's hear it." I told it to him, and, and he said, I would produce that if you want. And I said, sure. And he literally called up Jeff Robinov, then head of Warner Brothers, said, Goyer's got the Superman take. I think you should hear it. And the idea was to just to see if, if we could tell a superhero story, but in a world that was relatable, that seemed more like our own, and hopefully that that would have more relevance. And the response has been amazing, obviously. I mean, Superman's a huge hit. When you when you go into it, is there that fear that you might be creating something that tanks? Is that sure. always in the back of your mind? Sure, I mean, yeah. But you, you have to try to not think about it. You can't write a blockbuster, or I don't think you can. I remember Henry saying you can't play an icon. Right. You still have to play a character, and you still have to tell a story. And if you sit down and you say, I'm going to write a blockbuster, I think you're doomed to fail. Chris was a big protector of the movie in that way. Any time sort of that stress would come out or you know, Warner Brothers would be worried about things, Chris would just say, just leave them alone. Let them do their thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of Hollywood is talking about the doom state of the film industry and how it's either a tentpole movie right. or, or it's a micro a, budget. Or a micro budget. Hollywood has kind of abdicated making mid budget mm -hmm. films, which I think is sad. The outlook, at least in the short term, for movies, for screenwriters is grim. But on the other hand, a lot of that work has migrated into television. And I would argue, pound for pound, that more interesting work is being done in basic cable and cable television than most movies. When my wife and I sit down after the kids are asleep, we don't usually watch movies. We watch Breaking Bad or right. Mad Men. And you work in television. I do. So you've got... I'm not an idiot. Yeah. I see where the... <laughs> it's also fun. It's different. It's yeah. different in television to tell a, you know, it's a serialized show and you can tell a story over 10 hours or 13 mm -hmm. hours as opposed to wrapping it up in mm -hmm. two. And what is it about... <clears throat> <clears throat> the comic books that speak to you. I mean, obviously, you're an avid collector. You've been doing it since you were a kid. I grew up in Michigan, single mom. She was pursuing a PhD. She would go to class. She would drop us off at the comic book store, and they would watch us while she was in class. And I was just weaned on those, and I absolutely adored them. I remember as a kid, my moral fiber came from comic books. It didn't come from, like, Just So stories or you know, the Iliad or the Odyssey, it came from comic books, which of course we're all influenced by those. So I think it's just sort of our modern version of the Greek myth. My idea of perfect happiness is getting out of the Hollywood rat race and uh, getting a couple of acres up in Oregon and some pygmy goats and, um, I don't know, learning how to cook and letting my kids run around in the mud. If I could change one thing about myself, it would be how many times I'm mistaken for Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci, does that really happen all? I can All totally see now the time. Yeah. Like, like multiple times a week. 